Hello everyone, Randy here again, and today we've been working on the Quad Runner here again. Uh, this is a Honda 4 Trax 200SX 1986 model, so just a bit uh, on the older side. Uh, for you folks that have seen my previous video on this, we were cleaning out the uh, carburetor. Uh, hopefully that was going to solve our problems. Uh, it has not solved our problem. We're still having issues with it yet. Uh, the issue we're having, folks, after about 5 to 20 minutes, and yes, it is that big of a time range, uh, anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes, uh, it will simply die and it will not restart. Uh, we figured, folks, that's because it was flooding out carburetor. Uh, the carburetor was really dirty and gunked up, by the way. So it's all clean. Uh, we actually cleaned it out here again. Been working on this a little bit. Uh, still did not solve the problem. Uh, the first time I cleaned it out, it ran out of carb cleaner, folks, so I couldn't get it as good as I wanted to get it. But this time, we got it really good. Uh, still having issues. We're not entirely sure what's going on here, folks, but uh, I've got my compression tester. We're going to do a compression test on the uh, motor here and see what we got for as far as compression goes. Like I said, folks, it's after about 5 to 20 minutes, it just dies, and you cannot restart it for about an hour, hour and a half or so, something like that. So, anyway, folks, let's uh, get started here. We're going to have to pull the uh, spark plug out, and uh, I do have the uh, service manual up there. It's going to... It got actually got directions in it for how to do it for this particular motor. So we're going to try to follow those and uh, we'll see once what we get. Okay, folks, we're going to start by removing the spark plug here. And I believe that was an 18 millimeter. And yes, it is. And I've done the uh, compression test once here already, folks. I uh, did it uh, like a week or so ago. I uh, got what I thought was like a um, pretty good results, but then I was reading the book, folks, like, okay, maybe the results are not as good as I, w I thought it was. So we're going to do it here again. Now, the motor is not warmed up. It is actually cold at the moment, so this might affect our results here a little bit. Okay, and the compression test. Hopefully, you folks can uh, see this. What is it? This one. Let's find out. Yes, that one. Okay. And then we want... Oh, that makes a difference which one of these we use or does it? Maybe it does. We'll grab that one. I think that's the right one. Make sure we get that in there somewhat tight. I don't want any false readings because it's leaking there. And then our gauge. And that's what the gauge looks like. Uh, like I said, folks, I did the test once already, and it was right around 150. And according to the book, we're supposed to have 170 to 198. So it's a little on the low side, which is not good. Okay, and then we need to have the throttle position here. Hopefully you folks can see this as well all the way open. So we're going to achieve that with just a little bit of uh, cheatery here. In other words, we're going to tape it open. Okay, I think we're ready to perform the test at this point. We got everything set. I'll see if maybe if I can hold this here and you folks should be able to see it. And I'm just going to crank it over manually here. Up to 60. To 90 and what we're waiting for folks it should continue to climb all the way up till it gets to whatever the maximum is before that falls off I'll just take it off up to 120 and the next one folks I think it's gonna jump to 150 and that's probably where it's gonna stop we'll find out oh no, not quite to 150 yet 130 uh, 140 maybe Almost 150. And still not quite 150. Eh, I think we can call that 150 there, folks. Okay. Okay, it went up a little bit more. Up 
But folks, looks like that's where it's gonna hold. Just a little bit above 150, and by a little bit, I mean little bit. I'm gonna do it one more time, just to make sure it's the same. So by the way, I did this test when it was hot, and we got the same reading, so 150. So it doesn't seem to matter if it's hot or cold, it's giving us 150. Up to 70. Up to 90, 100. Up to 120. Yeah, it gets to 120, folks, and then it seems like it takes a little bit more. Uh, about 135. Okay, we're going to call that, folks, 150. Okay, so like I said, folks, it's supposed to be 170 to 190. It is a little bit on the low side. So what we're going to do here, folks, we're going to take this back out. Just disconnect, actually, this decompress. There we go. Take this back out. And according to the manual here, you folks may notice I brought a spoon. We're going to try the little oil trick here, see if we can determine is the piston rings or the valves leaking. Or maybe it could be a gasket too. Very well possible. Looks like the gasket seals right here from the looks of it. And there's also one in here somewhere. And then there's another one up here somewhere. Pour about one teaspoon of engine oil through the spark plug hole. Thank it, folks. I've never done this before, but when you start it back up, it's probably going to smoke like the dickens. So, got a spoon. This is pretty close to a teaspoon. Grab some oil here a moment, and we're going to try to pour that in there. Give me a little bit. Yeah, we should be able to get in there pretty good. And for oil, folks, we're going to use basically the same oil that's in it. Just the this is the Honda oil. Okay, looks pretty close to a teaspoon. I see I spilled a little bit there, but it looks like I got most of it in. Okay, and then you're supposed to just cycle the engine just a little bit to get that oil spread around. Okay, that should be pretty good. And uh, basically the idea behind this, folks. Oh yes, you poor kitty, huh? Uh, the idea behind this, uh, with oil in there, it's supposed to help the piston seal. So if the piston is leaking, folks, the oil will seal the piston. And if we still get the same reading, we can assume it's probably the valves or a gasket leak somewhere here. Uh, if we get a better reading, though, folks, then we can assume it's probably the piston or the uh, cylinder wall, something's you know, scored, piston rings are shot, something. Okay, make sure we get that somewhat tight. That should be good. And we'll repeat the test. Pull one, 60. 112, folks, that jumped way up. 135. Okay, folks, and I cannot hold this anymore. Let's see what's here. I'm gonna have to use both hands. It's pulling hard. 90 result I wanted to see. We're up to 180 now. That is 30 pounds more without oil. So we can assume there's probably something wrong with the piston, piston rings, cylinder wall. I was hoping for uh, more of a valve problem, but it doesn't look like that's the case. 
Okay, folks, we're going to have to start taking this thing apart again. I'm not sure how much I'm going to record of that. Uh, as you can see, folks, we have it uh, stripped down at the moment. Got the plastic off of it just so we can get at stuff more. Uh, we've had the fuel tank off already so we can get down at the piston or the yeah, top of the cylinder here anyway. So we'll uh, see once if we can get down through the rest of it. Okay, folks, I think we're going to wrap up the video here. Uh, we just tested the cylinder here. It looks like it is indeed something wrong with the piston or the rings. Uh, we put the oil in it. We are getting now a significantly better reading. And by significantly, I mean, folks, I'm talking going from 150 to 180. That is a pretty good change, at least in my opinion anyway. So I think what I'm going to do next, folks, then I'll, I'll probably make a separate video of this. We're going to see what's if we can take the uh, top of the cylinder here, the valves and stuff off. Not entirely sure what's all involved in that. We're going to find out, uh, see if we can get that off, see what's, if we can actually look in, see what's, what's going on in that uh, cylinder. See if it's, if it's scored up or if the piston rings are just simply shot. Not sure. But anyway, folks, thanks for watching, and until uh, next time, and if you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them below.